Welcome back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. And we're talking about community matters because the Twitter community, which is a global community, is nevertheless a community. Um, and uh, we have for this discussion a senior engineer at Think Tech, uh, Eric Kalander, and he's going to help us do that. So it's uh, Will Twitter Recover? Uh, the machinations continue. And uh, now we're going we're gonna to discuss that. Yeah, welcome to the show, Eric Kalander. It's nice to see your smiling face. Aloha, good to be here. So uh, I guess the operative, the operative uh, question is, will Twitter can, uh, continue and recover? You know, when you hear all the press and you see all these people leaving and advertisers leaving, and, um, you know, and, and you don't trust them anymore, I don't. So query, are they going to continue or is somebody going to eat their lunch? Uh, well, ultimately, Twitter's not going to go anywhere. It's uh, too big of a social media platform, way too many users for it to just disappear, I think. Um, but it's uh, people are losing faith in it uh, because, you know, ever since Musk took over, he had the rise in uh, hate speech, uh, misinformation, violent speech. And people just are going to some people will tune out. But ultimately, Twitter will stick around, you know. The politicians are going to need it. You know, businesses are still going to need it. Um, Trump is probably going to need it if he decides to come back and continue his uh, 2024 campaign. Hasn't done that yet, though. That's really a cliff. No, he hasn't. It? You know, Musk yeah. offered him that possibility, and he still isn't doing it. I guess he's waiting for what he thinks. Uh, Trump is waiting for what he thinks is the opportune moment. But let me ask. Well, he's you also know. got. Oh, Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, so, well, he's also got uh, Truth Social he's all, he has to worry about. Uh, a move to Twitter would mean uh, it would decrease the value of Truth Social. You know, the uh, the what's special about Truth Social is the exclusivity of Trump's tweets or truths or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so if he goes to Twitter, what does that make Truth Social? Oh, it's the end of Truth Social, I think, if he moves. Maybe it's just a matter of old-fashioned dollars. Uh, for him, he cares about that. So when well, he is trying to uh, make it public, he's trying to merge Truth Social into a, uh, I don't have the name of the other company, but he is trying to merge it to get it publicly traded. And if he's got those plans in it, uh, I don't see how a, a move to Twitter would help that out. Yeah. You get a trading card when you join? It's a joke. That's a <laughs> joke. <laughs> Maybe we should make those. $99 trading card. Yeah, we should have ThinkTech trading cards, I think. Anyway, Absolutely. So if I have, let's say somebody comes around and says, you know, enough with this Twitter. Jay, here's here's $20 million. I want you to develop uh, another word, another, you know, social media that's like Twitter. I mean, there's a lot of things in social media platforms that are really not protectable. You know, that copyright trademark protection, you can develop a new one. Um, patent protection, you can develop a new one, maybe a better one. So I, I come up with a, another word, uh, say, uh, flitter, <laughs> for, for the lack of anything else comes to mind. And I make a, I make a, a, a flitter uh, type uh, platform. And I make it smarter and better because, you know, this, you know this, there's always the possibility of innovating something better than what you're doing now and what the other guy's doing. You know, you integrate all the ideas, you know, and make something that's completely innovative. And now you've got another one. Why doesn't that happen? Couldn't that, wouldn't that happen? With somebody who has got his head screwed on right, not like Elon Musk, somebody, you know, who will, you know, uh, 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 keep bad content out and so forth and not you know, do the kinds of bizarre things he's been doing. So if I get if I take my say my twenty million dollars and I and I create Flitter, um, then I could have um, a platform that is uh, similar in functionality, and I could advertise it really well, and I could make it very appealing and and I could take all these steps to make it very engaging for people for my my market, if you will. Um, why can't I beat Elon Musk at his own game? It's just a matter of 
you know, all these companies, all these social media platforms came up from nowhere in no time. They were all almost immediate. Well, what makes Twitter a long-term play at this point? Well, when Twitter came out, there was nothing else like it. So no competition. They they could so uh, same with like, you know, Facebook, they had no competition. So they soared to uh popularity. And uh that the, the problem if you had twenty million dollars, Jay, to make your own Twitter account or Flitter, as you call it, uh, the problem is you're not going to have users. And that's what Twitter has. Uh, and you do see there is a company called Mastodon, which is trying to do exactly what you're talking about in making a, uh, a competitor to Twitter. And they're, they're getting more traction. There's there's I, I don't have the numbers, but they're getting more and more users. But it still just pales in comparison to what Twitter has. Hmm. Yeah, well, you know, there's a there's a kind of boundary there. It's like if I if I hear the name Mastodon, you know, 10 times in a week, if I see ads and I get email and um, people send me, you know, messages from Mastodon, all of a sudden I'm, I'm going to pass. I'm, I'm going to pass a certain point, the Rubicon, if you will. I'm, I'm going to be really interested and I'm going to join. I, I might subscribe and, and, and maybe they're going to offer me benefits discounts and other products, who knows what, um, you know, some smart stuff, right? Smarter than Twitter ever did. And in better faith, you know, once you find a software company is not dealing in good faith, you really shouldn't hang around. I mean, we've, we've learned that, haven't we? Um, and so if this was a clearly in good faith, doing the right thing for you as a, as a, as a subscriber as, and a, you know, customer, um, then at some point you're going to say, hmm, this is the successor. They have crossed the boundary. They are in the same space. They may not have, you know, all the hundreds of millions of uh, installs that Twitter does, but they have, say, 50 million or 100 million, and they're on the way, and I like them, and everybody tells me about them, and, you know, it's in the network. It's in the mesh, the social mesh, if you will. Um, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Mastodon and I'm going to drop off Twitter. I think it's possible, but you're right. It's a long way to go. Um, and, and the question is whether he can ever recover in terms of getting a CEO who, who really understands what we're talking about here um, and, and appealing to people um, in a way to hold them. Because right now, I think his, his fringe membership is probably dropping off pretty quickly because the word is out on him. Um, and I think that's always the case. It's not only Twitter. Somebody could do a job on Facebook, too. They just have to find new innovations. Think about Facebook. Think about all of them is that they're trying to innovate, too. They're trying to change. And the question is, who changes best? You know, Facebook is always dynamic, always coming up with new stuff. Yeah. But I, yeah, suggest, so that, you, I suggest that that social media is a platform for change. It's all about change. And that's what it should be. Absolutely. That's where that's where you should start seeing the you know, uh, seeing change. You know, it's how you get your messages out to the entire world. So that's that's what you'd like to see. Uh, but to to go on with uh, the uh, the new Flitter or Mastodon thing. If yeah, hopefully that you know Macedon or whatever uh, if Jack Dorsey's you know it's been rumored that he's going to come up with a new Twitter, but whatever, hopefully that whatever uh, new social media would be successful. But it, uh, we could just stick with Twitter if Musk goes back, brings back those policies, brings back those employees who uh, uh, checked for hate speech and violent speech and misinformation. You know we have the tools and the audience in Twitter already, just. Bring it back to how it was. One of the things that fascinates me is uh, spam, and and I get tons of it, and it's uh, waste waste my time, and sometimes it's really destructive and malicious and all that. So my mission in life is to keep it out of my system, um, and until now I haven't been able to really do that. Uh, I looked at the, uh, the you know the the rules functionality in the Apple Mail, and it didn't do anything. And if you unsubscribe, they don't care. They do not care if you unsubscribe. 
It's like asking for more trouble to unsubscribe. But I did talk to somebody, actually it was in Apple, and he pointed out that all the mail goes through Google, all the mail. So whatever Apple is sending you, it's going through Google. That's a little scary. That Google has the servers and Apple signs up for those servers and that's how you get the mail. And Google also has, uh, you know, filters. So you can say, I, I don't want to get a- any mail from Joe Blow. And you can, you know, put that in a filter and you will never get any mail on any system, including Apple or Google Mail or anything, because you filtered it out. So what I'm, the reason I'm telling you this long-winded story, Eric, is that if you don't like misinformation, if you don't like hate speech, if you don't like those things that uh, that Elon Musk has allowed to come back in, you, I mean, call it Mastodon, call it, um, you know, whatever you want, it could, could create filters, sort of the way Google has created filters on email. And you could lay the filter on top of Twitter and say, filter out all, all these kinds of bad things. And then you could have Twitter without the bad things. Is there a future in that? I think there could be. I mean, the, the technology definitely exists there to do exactly what you're talking about. Uh, will Musk want to do something like that? Probably not. Uh, his whole thing has been, you know, he's trying to protect free speech and all that. You know, he's, he's being very, uh, very adamant about that kind of that stuff. But it it's, it goes to the you know screaming fire in a movie theater you know what what is allowed under free speech what are the limits of free speech and I think hate speech and violent excuse me a violent uh, speech or just blatant misinformation like what what good does that do to have it have people doing that all the time I, I don't see a benefit to it you know the uh, artificial intelligence at this point becomes relevant. Because um, I could create a filter using artificial intelligence, and I could um, be really smart about excluding things uh, by way of a filter. And I could put rules in that are much more complex than the rules available under Apple or Microsoft or even Google. Um, And I can exclude, you know, it's always better to exclude too much than too little. That's my view of it, because I I don't want to get trash. Uh, either on email or on Twitter. And so I could have my 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 other company, Mastodon, uh, or with the, the other name that I came up with, whatever it was. Flitter. Fl- Flitter. That <laughs> work as an overlay. And um, it could have the artificial intelligence. And I could pay. I could pay for that because I want to have a greater level of confidence. Um, you know, the... Artificial intelligence, since it first came up in, uh, um, I guess it came up after 9-11, essentially. Um, It it was a network social analysis, I think they called it originally. And um, it would would look through large volumes of email, for example, and it would uh, pick up the names of terrorists, for example, who were at the same meetings and then the uh, intelligence agencies will be able to connect the dots on those people. Um, social networking analysis, it was called. And it, it started in the corporate world and it wound up in the government. So <clears throat> the question is, uh, using AI, I might be able to create a, either A, a much better Twitter, or B, a filter that wrote on top of Twitter and, and, and help me get you know, a, a more uh, curated subset, if you will, of, of what Twitter is offering. You think that's in the future? Yeah, I, I don't see why not. I, again, it, it's up, up to debate if Twitter or Musk is going to uh, use any uh, any technology like that or AI like that. But it, it, I think it definitely, you know, you see a lot more automation, AI stuff in, uh, any, everywhere, not just social media. So I, I can't see social media being any different. Yeah. So what about what about Musk? I mean, uh, we have learned a lot about him. <laughs> you know, it's almost like Trump. You know, the psychologists get on cable news and tell you um, what kind of diagnosis you should consider for Elon Musk. So, how does he look right now? What kind of a person is he, according to all the news that comes out about him? 
uh, he uh, he's still popular among his uh, his his uh, ardent supporters, but uh, he's not looking very good as a uh, as a social media leader. You know, uh, it just he just hasn't been doing well. And meanwhile, his uh, Tesla company, you know, they're down sixty five percent. I think this year lost like twenty billion dollars. The first person to ever lose uh, such a sum of money. Uh, he's he's not doing so well. So. It's it's about time he picks a new CEO. However, he does it. There's been a few rumors uh, as far uh, Jack Dorsey and also our good friend Jared Kushner. He's been rumored as a uh, as a possible head. But however, he does it. Twitter poll or selecting someone, he, he should probably do it soon. Did you say Kushner? He uh, well, uh, he had. Uh, so uh, to be Trump fair, name? Musk and Twitter. Yep, <laughs> he they, he hasn't been named at all. This was just a rumor that was out there. So, oh my God, I would I would turn my back on that whole operation if that happened. <laughs> I would never utter the word again. But um, yeah, I, I remember uh, that uh, first he said, uh, "You guys don't like me as a CEO, and and uh, we're going to have a vote. And if the vote turns out against me, I'm going to get another CEO, and I'm going to quit." Um, and and the they voted him out. Turn, they voted him out. But then he said, "I was only kidding." <laughs> Jokes on you, right? <laughs> I was only kidding, but then I think he was under a lot of pressure for only kidding, and <clears> that he said, "I'll look, I'll look for another CEO," which is, ain't easy. Uh, if if you no, you, it's not easy. It's yeah. I can't imagine being a very uh, uh, I, don't, I don't see a lot of people wanting that job. It's going to be a hard job to do. Uh, Twitter was never really that financially successful back uh, when Jack was running it. So it's 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 kind of looking like a job where you're going to be set up to fail. You know, people people are already uh, it's very unpopular in a lot of people's minds. Uh, you got to listen to Musk and pretty much do whatever Musk tells you. Uh, I can see it being uh, not a very popular job. Yeah. Yeah. He's the kind of he's micromanager type of guy. And he's oh, yeah. not, he is not going to let you just do your thing. He's going to tell you mm -hmm. step by step what to do. So, but what is it though to be the CEO of a big social media platform? What kind of a job is it? Because you have to keep off the keep the misinformation, disinformation out. You have to keep the hate speech. I think that can be either mechanized or you hire a ton of people to look at everything. Um, what else is the challenge if you're the CEO of Twitter? I don't know. You should ask Jack Dorsey. He uh, he happened to uh, do a pretty pretty decent job with uh, at least the uh, um, the content on Twitter. So it, it it goes back to like what I was saying with the policies that they had. They already had these policies in place. They had these. Uh, they the Twitter was being run fine before Bus came in. I I just don't see why he can't just go back to uh, to what it was. Why? I, I really don't know the answer to this. Why? Um, did he make all those changes? It didn't sound like a doesn't sound like it was a good idea. Um, I think he's trying to find any way to come up with money because again, Twitter's not very financially successful. And how do you save money? You cut half of your employee, half of your workforce, uh, which he did, and now we're seeing the uh, the ramifications of that. Well, and there's these issues about uh, how you have to rebuild your workforce if you want to rebuild you know, the uh, functionality that you had before. Um, but the people who left and the people who read up on the people who left, they're not going to be too excited about coming in. You know, you were saying that it's hard to find another CEO. It's probably hard to find a lot of people um, who are, got fired summarily uh, by, by Musk. Uh, why in the world would you work for a company where you can get summarily terminated and he's still going to be the de facto CEO anyway. Uh, why? Why in the world would you do that? I wouldn't do that. And furthermore, I, you know, I would, I wouldn't want to be associated with a company with the reputation that he has created for it. Yes, yeah, I totally agree with that. Totally agree. Yeah. So if he can't, yeah, you know, let's extend this out. If he can't find uh, a CEO with some real chutzpah. Uh, who can come up with new ideas, you know, and and innovate into a new, more profitable zone. If you can't find people who will replace all of those uh, 
what do you want to call it, information vetting, uh, you know, employees in Twitter that he fired. Um, what happens? What's the ghost of Christmas future on this? Where, where do you extend that? I mean, how does that wind up? But you can see Twitter has become a, a more of a free for all out there, you know, without any moderation. And, and he's got the uh, the whole blue check mark thing. It's hard to tell who is a real journalist or not. So it'd be really kind of the Wild West. Uh, and that's kind of, I think, what he wants with a complete free speech on any amount of paid speech, whatever you want to say. That's that's, I think, what he's going for. You think it'll work? Let's assume he gets there. You You think it'll work? I do. I think he. I think because I, again, I don't think Twitter is going to go anywhere. It's too big of a comp, too big of a presence in everyone's lives nowadays. So I don't think Twitter is actually going to go anywhere. Uh, but I think its credibility will will go. It might not be used as as, as such a serious uh, news news uh, resource. Does, does does that change the complexion the the the, the demography? Of, of the members, of the people who look at it and read it. It sounds like from what you said, it does. That over time, you know, if if he makes a complete free-for-all free for out of it, it'll be, it'll be a different a, a different group, a different community, if you will. Um, yeah, and especially if other, if, the, if news sources and uh, reporters go to something like Mastodon or something like that, where you know, you can you can expect it to be reliable and real information. Uh, yeah, people are going to leave Twitter for that reason. For as a, as a as a news source, I can still see Twitter being around as just you know a fun social media kind of thing, or you know attempted coups. Uh, but I think most news sources will be uh, could could go another way. Yeah. So how does that affect the advertisers? Because you know he he can't make this work. He'll never get to profitability or the profitability that no. he wants to have without advertisers. And already he's lost a lot of advertisers. And I'm sure, you know, in terms of opportunity costs, there's a lot of potential advertisers out there that wouldn't touch him. Um, so um, this is a two-part question. Will the advertisers come back, do you think, in a free-for-all? And will the members who quit him I'm back in a free for all. Well, they could. Um, you know, it, it just Musk has to, I don't know, bring those bring those policies back. Moderate Twitter. Moderate the content on Twitter. Do what people do. What the users, the majority of the users, want Musk to do with the with the platform. Uh, it seems like he's just kind of doing whatever he wants to do, uh, and that's uh, that's pleasing, you know, some people out there. But overall, uh, he's going to have a lot of unhappy users. Yeah. Somehow I feel we're at an inflection point. And I know it, in many ways it's too big to fail. But whenever mm, something is too big to fail, I personally would like to see it fail. <laughs> just, <laughs> just as a, a lesson, a lesson to the, the people who think it's too big to fail. I mean, the CEO, the owner. Um, so uh, what's the time frame, you think, Eric? Um, by which we'll see this work out one way or the other. Uh, we'll see in the in this election cycle. We'll we'll, we'll see. If there's going to be a lot of big moves that happen between now and November 2024, and Twitter is going to be right in the middle of it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see a lot of Twitter. We're going to see a lot of the big changes coming up. Mm, that's a really interesting way of looking at it. Um, between now and 2024, that's what um, uh, less than two years. Um, and that, and that means, um, in the, in the middle of the election cycle means, may I say political ads, which are very lucrative. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's what you are talking about here is that, you know, if he wants to earn a lot of money and now in the election cycle, and he's got all these people who may not be all that Akamai about, you know, about what's true on Twitter and what's not true on Twitter, but they'll stay with it and well enough to continue as members. And therefore, even if his commercial advertisers don't return, um, his political advertisers will pay him big bucks 
Maybe that's absolutely the plan. yeah. Because maybe that's the plan. Yeah, you you'll always have the the, the audience is still there. Um, and the, the tweets by you know if you're if you're running for president, you know, if you tweet something out, it'll be covered on the news. Uh, so the the, the political uh, benefits are still will still be there, and they and they have the money too. So Musk is, uh Musk knows that. Why am I kind of sad about this? It makes me despondent. To think of a guy coming in and wrecking the truth. He's working against the truth. That's what he's doing. And through his efforts and through this company, he is misinforming the American, the global, the global public. It isn't just the U.S. He's letting them be misinformed. Yeah. Well, yeah. And he knows that it's misinformation. So my final area of discussion with you, Eric, is regulation. You know, we wouldn't have touched the First Amendment with a 10-foot pole five years ago. Now here we are, uh, wondering how much damage Elon Musk can do to the truth in our country and our world. It begs for regulation. Um, What kind of regulation could we do? I mean, uh, we have the First Amendment. This is going to be a problem in terms of any content regulation from the government. But what can we do with, in an ideal approach, in an ideal world, how can we clean it up through government? Well, it's hard with bringing government into it because then you're going to, people are going to say, okay, well, now it's, is that, the, is that the government's message or is it, are they letting people, you know, be uh, saying their own opinions? And I think a lot of people would say, oh, this is just the government trying to, you know, trying to get their whatever message they have out. I don't, you know, I mean, maybe the answer is nothing, not a, not a thing. Um, on the other hand, uh, you know, part of that question assumes that somebody has to do something because this has a, a big effect on public opinion, um, on a, a, a well-informed electorate here and elsewhere. It's not just the U.S. And can, you know, I suppose the first part of that question is, can we in this country and other countries that, that, that have Twitter followings, can we afford to have Twitter do a free-for-all on politi- political issues and, per our discussion a minute ago, on political ads? Um, can we afford to do that? Or, or are we, are we, does that create a kind of hole in the democratic boat? Boat. Well, no, yeah, we, we need, we need some, some sort of regulation. I don't know if it needs to be a government regulation or, you know, just having the resources and teams at Twitter to, to handle it, which is what they did before. But look at uh, Brazil right now, uh, you know, with the attempted coup the other day from Bolsonaro's uh, supporters. Uh, people down, researchers down there uh, are linking. A significant part of that is because of the uh, uh, they got rid of the moderation for violent speech down there. And so they're seeing a lot of the messages, a lot of the reason why that coup attempt happened happened was from Twitter. And so that could that's the second time in two years we've seen something like this. And uh, you just hope it doesn't spread to any other countries. Ah, I didn't know that's which it could. That's really scary. And what, and what it suggests is that if you want to organize a conspiracy and an insurrection and a coup, Twitter's your baby. Uh, You can communicate with people. You can lie to them. um, You can do incendiary things with them, for them. It's quite the mechanism. Yeah. So, uh, wow, you know, that is is a huge affront to democratic government. Um, And it goes back to the question I raised earlier, and that is, can we afford to allow him to continue this way? If if Twitter was free for all in Brazil, and and the Brazil insurrection was a result of that, then we have a kind of a, a proof of the correlation of the relationship between the one and the other, and it could happen again. You know, I maintain that the the insurrection we had on January sixth did not end on January 6th, that the, the conspirators are still out there and the, the, the wish to conspire 
Uh, the benefits of conspiring are still out there, uh, not only in this country, but obviously in others like Brazil. So we need, I, let me pose this as a, we need to have regulation, not only on a national basis, but on an international basis, because Twitter and companies like Twitter are international. Mm -hmm. And again, these these teams and policies were already in place, uh, not just for the United States, but Brazil had their own team. And, uh, you know, multiple uh, popular countries probably had all their own teams to do this kind of thing. So it's 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 not like a mystery of how do we do this. It's it's the answer we had it already. One last thing before we run, and that is this. You know, one troubling thing about the internet is that it's anonymous. You can have a Twitter handle, and um, it's really hard to find out who you are. I mean, by somebody watching or or receiving your messages. Um, could we would we be better off if we required validation of, of who you are when you send that email or send that message or make that Twitter post so we know that it's you and that if you are being irresponsible, if you are talking conspiracy and, res and insurrection and all that, we know and we can prove it up. Well, that it, it, they should do that. That that's how uh, uh, Facebook is pretty much set up now. Um, you can't go and make a fake Facebook account. You got to verify who you are, and th there's several steps to make sure that the person who makes an account is who they are. And so Twitter could could easily do that. Um, but it's again, it's not it's not a mystery of how to do it. Uh, they could easily do it, but who knows if they will? No, um, he won't. I don't think I mean, every every. Thing he says and does suggests that he won't. And I guess one other thing, and I'm really not familiar with this, but you know, um, YouTube has a, an extraordinary following now, um, and and we'll have another show on this later this week um, about how YouTube is innovating so many things and it's becoming so popular and competitive with TV and cable. Um, but Twitter can also deliver video. Um, so Twitter could get more heavily involved in video, just like YouTube, couldn't it? They could, but I think uh, I think YouTube has that has that uh, section of the internet pretty locked down. Um, I, 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 Twitter could, yeah, they, and you, there are videos on there, but I don't see it going uh, the way that you how uh, how YouTube is set up, and what about um, you know the the marginal uh, platforms? Uh, you know, I was looking at my own list of platforms that I signed up for at one time or another, and um, a number of them are, aren't there anymore. They come, they go, they're all done, um, and so what you have is a a kind of evolution that at a certain point, if their subscriptions, you know, drop past a certain level, they fold. And they don't they don't write you an email and say, Eric, we just folded. <laughs> they just fold. <laughs> no courtesy. No. There's not a whole lot of courtesy on, on social media or on email for that matter, or on the net in general. I mean a company could go out of business and, and the website goes away, and that's the end of that. Um, but you know, I really, I really wonder. It, it's sort of like, it's sort of like the big banks in this country, in Canada, uh, where at the end of the day they all consolidate, and they're all they're all too big to fail. Facebook, arguably, too big to fail, um, and you have a smaller and smaller group. All the ones that were marginal have dropped off. And now you have these huge behemoths of social media. Is that where this is going to go? Uh, so, I mean, time will tell. Uh, I, I don't see, uh, I don't know how friendly Facebook and Twitter are. I don't see a merger happening anytime soon. Oh, God. Uh, but, but maybe, <laughs> maybe that's, uh, maybe that's uh, the fail safe Musk has, you know, someone, someone like Facebook can go and buy them and turn it around for the good. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, you know, there just doesn't seem to be. There's this, this Facebook and it's some subsidiary Instagram. There's LinkedIn. Uh, I suppose new business social media programs are coming online, but they're nowhere near as big as, as Facebook or uh, Twitter. And so you could probably name all the meaningful social media platforms now on one or two hands max, right? Yeah. Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and now TikTok. Yeah. So you, you've actually done it on one hand. You've actually done it on one four. hand. <laughs> and, and it makes each one of them all the more powerful. And you're right to, to raise the question about suppose Facebook um, and uh, Twitter get together and have a beer one day and decide they're going to merge. You know, in the, during the Trump years, there was not a lot of antitrust at the Department of Justice where they stopped mergers. It just didn't happen very much, although the law would presumably allow them to stop the merger. Um, but suppose they got into a deal where they were going to merge. And uh, it's sort of like Instagram, right? You can still see them separately, but they were together. And it's sort of like those um, conservative radio stations in the Midwest. They're all owned by Sinclair, you know, hundreds mm -hmm. of radio stations, and they all have the same news, the same editorial policy. So if those two had a beer and decided they were going to merge and decided they were going to have the same editorial policy, news sources, whatever, content management or non-management. What would that mean to us? Um, I'm not sure, Jay. Uh, it would probably... I don't think I have an answer for you, Jay. That's a, uh, it's a, I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, well, you could... You could consolidate it right into one pyramid, and then we'd all be subject to the same information all day. This would be, and if it was all, it all come from the same place. Misinformation. I, I wouldn't, mm -hmm. want, I wouldn't want that to happen. Okay, last one, last question to you. Twitter is blemished. Twitter. The press has re reported so many things about Twitter that it makes you wonder about. Them. A, their truth, and B, their internal organization, you know, how they um, you know, filter things, and C, their future, because of the, you know, disenchantment of uh, advertisers. Yeah. So right now, today, let's, let's make you 18 years old, just out of high school. Would you become a member of Twitter? Uh, yeah, probably. That's, uh, that's just, if I was an 18 year old going into college, I would, I would have a Twitter account. Probably. I wouldn't be using it for, uh, you know, hate speech or politics or news or anything. I'd be using it for, you know, fun. Uh, but as I got older, I would probably, uh, distance myself, which is pretty similar to what I, what my, my real life experience with Twitter. Uh, you know, I did it for a little bit and I've, uh, kind of backed away and now I don't have any interest in going back. Okay, I'm sure there's going to be more. You know, there's $44 billion at stake here. And uh, Elon Musk is not going to just dry up and float away. He's going to do stuff. I don't know what. So we have to watch this, and I hope I can catch you again for an update on what's going for on sure. our unfavorite social media platform, Twitter. <laughs> Thank you, Eric. Thanks, Jack. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.